This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. How do you fix something like this, though? I mean, without just wiping out the entire department and starting from scratch, because, yeah, you got three or four. God knows there's probably a handful more in there. Um, but not everyone. By in, I'm sure there's fine people in there that that are there for the right reasons. Um, but that's not everyone, clearly. And, and then you have everybody else in, in the ecosystem that, that aren't officers, that work in the office, that answer the phones, that dispatch, whatever, all, all the different pieces that keep the thing alive. Um, and, and, you know, if you, you pour, uh, you know, you pour water onto sand and if you had it like in a glass vase, you can see it just, you know, it gets down there eventually. There's some parts mm -hmm. that stay dry and some parts that are, are wet, but if you really want a bunch of dry sand, you can't just pour that thing out and hope you're going to get much dry sand because everything has been affected one way or another by the water. Um, I, I feel like that's the case with something here with, with these bad apples. A lot of them are towards the top. A lot of them uh, had a lot of power, um, and there's still many that do have power. Um, these other two officers have not been arrested as of yet. They say it's an ongoing investigation. They are just allegations. They're innocent until proven guilty, so we'll let that play out. But, again, it took many years for this guy to get arrested, too, and it took a civil case from the parents. It took feds getting involved for them to finally go, hmm, maybe we have a problem here. Uh, or maybe it's like, hmm, people are going to hear about our problems here. Um, how do you fix this? Because it's not, it doesn't seem as easy as just, so let's, you know, shovel out a bit of the wet sand on top. It's like, yeah, it gets a little drier down here, but it's still, you can still tell it's been affected. How do you fix something where it runs that deep? Um, like you said, it's going to take outside investigation to to find, you know, it's like a wart to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you have one little virus and it's got all its tendrils. And so there's going to be a, a couple viruses in there that's going to take some interviewing, open, honest interviewing by outside people. So people don't feel there's going to be reciprocity against them. So it's going to take some outside interviewing or objectivity to identify the, the, the couple roots, because I guarantee you, it's only a few people that are creating a culture mm -hmm. of negativity like this. And then it, it spurts down. So you first you have to identify and, and just get rid of, you just have to lop it off. And it's going to take someone from the outside, people to feel safe, to share that kind of information. And then it, it's, it's a tricky thing to understand. And then re it's a re-education that's got to go on then too, because by and large, people want to do well, they want to do right, and they're going to want to conform to this to the to norm that in which you're in, you know, the group think. And so you have to reshift that group think, and that reshift in a group think comes from good, healthy leadership from the top, and it's got to filter down. And and the the most critical thing in a situation like this is the fear of reciprocity for being truthful is got to be very, very well done. Because you have to get people over that fear. Because again, fear is our motivation for everything. If people are in fear, they're going to either shut up, conform, or go away. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that bad leadership from the top, that's what they're doing. They're either shutting up, conforming, or going away. And now when the new leadership comes in, people underneath them have to understand what was done was wrong. Mm -hmm. There's no being, you know, as as I told you before we started the show, you know, Gavin DeBecker's book, The Gift of Fear. When you're dealing with unhealthy people, and you get in unhealthy patterns of behaviors that are wrong and, and abhorrent. Got to be blunt. There's no uh, there's no letting them down easy. No, this is blunt language used here. This was completely wrong, inappropriate. They're gone. Here's the new standard. And either you're on board or not. And but you give time to adjust. So I, you got to lop it off at the top. Be patient. Have the and the big thing because remember it's not just the the department itself it's trust that the community has in that department so you, we must be incredibly transparent and open and vulnerable where we can say here's where our blemishes are to the community here's exactly what we're doing to fix it have open forums have discussions because this, you, the community needs to be involved in this process and in, in the healing process otherwise they're going to continue not to have faith and trust in their organizations that are supposed to keep them safe yeah. It's uh, it's going to be a lot of work for that community. It is a lot of work and and re education. But it, but the, and I'm sorry to cut you. It no. is the righteous good work though, because no. we can't be safe without it. No, no, and that community won't be safe uh, without it. Do you think people in that department were surprised by by this arrest? I mean, you already publicly had a civil case going on. You had the rumors. You had all of this, and yet 
stayed there, stayed employed. I mean, is it one of those things where as humans, if you're working in that department and you're, and you're not one of the bad apples and I hate, again, I hate that term. Um, but if you're not one of them, but you're hearing these things, is it just the human nature of like, it can't be that bad. Rumors get spread. Rumors are this or that, but, it, but he wouldn't be doing that. That wouldn't be that far. Do you think there's some of that that goes on as to it almost that, that attitude can kind of enable this sort of stuff because people don't want to necessarily believe the absolute worst in the people that they, they surround themselves with every day. It, um, interesting word choices in there. I think, you know, surprised by the arrest, probably surprised by the behavior that led to the arrest. Probably not. Mm -hmm. This was going on a long time. And what happens is when, people are exposed to negative, bad behavior for a long period of time. They become accustomed to it. Becomes their, it becomes their norm. Yeah. Kind of like even the Gilgo Beach murderer, you know, the serial killer. That family yeah. got very used to a pattern of behavior of really bad crap, supposedly. Yeah. You know, and so it becomes the new norm. And so this department had a norm that is happening inside because these girls were groomed a long time by at least three people. Yeah. Well, at least allegedly. So allegedly. that's that's so I think what happened was when there was an arrest, that's what the shock was, not the behavior. The arrest was a shock. And I'm hoping, because, I mean, I put myself in a situation, this is where we use our deep, great empathy here. If that happened where I'm working in a place that I have to work because I have to provide for my family, I want to do the righteous work, I'm a good person, and I'm one of these people that's just kind of, you know, trying to turn a blinder and, and hoping that it's going to get better. And all of a sudden I see an arrest, you know what I'm feeling? Thank God a sigh of relief that the end might be in sight and we might be able to correct this. So I'm hoping by these arrests, it's going to inspire the good ones to rise up and take the leadership roles that they've always wanted. That's what I'm hoping here. Cause I guarantee you there's people that are breathing yep. a great sigh of relief that are ready to step up and ready to take control and take charge and, and right the ship that's been so wronged. Let's hope it happens for the sake of everybody. Yeah, me too. I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Yeah. That we All right, true crime addicts, let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast when suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, Get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So go ahead, search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and feast on the good stuff.